Hi, friendly friends. Hi, friends and amigos. Hi, amigas and friendosas. Miyamo is my name. My name is Miyamo. Most of also accompany me on this journey of wonder that we call live stream. My beloved and ever present co host, Rachel La Palosa. Four different names. Middle names are La and P. Last name is Posa. <laughs> Losa. <laughs> <laughs> um, are cognitive functions tax unfair? Are personality types unfair? The answer is totally. But it's not really the types that are unfair. It's the world. The world's unfair to certain types. Now, granted, there's con there's contextual qualifiers here in the sense that um, the world, I think, generally speaking, is quite unfair to ESFPs because it's so it's grown so communicative, so important that one uses words to reach agreement about things for the right reasons. So much action is actually just people talking online. For example, all the action that we do around here is just people talking online. They're at a, a huge disadvantage. And um, what else is it? It's easily unfair. Right, but it's also unfair to me, right? So it's like, um, it's unfair to make me bang my head against so many walls so many times. Granted, I'm in charge of my own behavior. I'm responsible for it, not them. But, you know, I'm like a doctor who keeps seeing this person who comes in with broken limbs. And I try to set them, and they keep going, no, 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 it's sprained. Or, no, no, that's how it's supposed to be. And I'm like, your arm's broken. Let me fix it. You know? So in that regard, it's unfair to me, too, because, I mean, the world's unfair to NTPs because NTPs have a lot of fancy talk they want to spew out that the vast majority of the population either can't understand or chooses not to the vast majority of the time because it's too much work or won't because they're not just not interested. Um, which type has the best stack? I'll say you've got the best stack. ESTJs. ESTJs have the best stack. Because their answer to every time something comes down to deliberate, deliberative conclusion or status or whatever, or being correct, their answer is always the same thing. Their answer is always the same thing. It's, um, well, you know, that's just not the way the world works. But, you know what they say, plan for the worst, hope for the best, plan for the worst. Um, so they're not concerned about correctness, ultimately. You can win all the arguments, and they'll just go, doesn't matter, just trying, to, just trying to work the system to get the outcomes I want. There's no challenging the frames. <laughs> There's no challenging my methodologies. Just pow, 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 getting shit done the way I want. And, of course, ESTJs are very effective. I don't think I've met anybody in my life <coughs> who's done as much cool, weird, crazy shit as my dad has. He's got a PhD in philosophy. He served in the Navy and in the Army. He played in the Army Band in Europe. He raced many Coopers in Europe. He uh, was a director for the Census Bureau. He's traveled all over the world, lots of different places, you know, um, he was a uh, landlord for a while. He had rental properties he managed. I mean, he's just done all kinds of everything, you know? Done way more in life than I ever have. Or ever will, probably. In terms of just raw experiences that are, are crazy, interesting experiences. You know, he talked talking the other night with Rachel and me, last night, I guess, about uh, how Hawaii used to be so just empty back in the 70s and 
it was so uninhabited <laughs> and both, and also unvisited by a tourist that they had like these. I know I'm talking about this honor system golf course where you just it's what you expected. It's like a campground. You put your money in the envelope and put it in there, and you and they have golf carts there, and you just drive drive off on one and golf. That's how it used to be, of course, not anymore. You know. Um. But I think it's the best act because number one, the truth, they're they're resiliently unbotherable by the truth. Ultimately, they may have this sort of brief, confused kind of look, but then it's back to their TE frame of reference. Um, and ESTJ is both smart and practical. They ask questions like, "Ah, uh, why are you taking those pictures, Eric? What do you?" What are you taking pictures of flowers for? Do you use them for anything? Well, sometimes I use them for backgrounds and videos and stuff, too. I don't know why I like taking pictures of flowers. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's how practical they are. It's how, yeah. how much everything has to fit into a TE frame of reference or an SI frame of reference. It is funny, though, because he used to take pictures on vacations right well in fact that's something i it's another thing that's on my list of things to do is i want to start um like if i just hammer through it i can get a shit ton of done i want to go through each of these photo albums take a picture of the photo album take a picture of each photo in the album and put together some archives for my dad to access online and for me and and delilah to access online as well it's good and then Partially because, well, for a couple of reasons. One, I like being useful to my dad in ways that he'll find useful, which is hard because if it's one of my ideas, usually it's gonna not he's not gonna find it useful or desirable. He doesn't like other people coming up with ideas. I have featured my dad before, but unfortunately Becky ruined it for us. So in other words, my dad was kind of like, yeah, I can make mm. some videos occasionally until Becky emailed him and threatening to sue him because of some shit I said in some video. You know, um, and being an ESTJ, the truth doesn't matter. The fact that he has that nobody has any possible chance of ever suing him for anything I do on YouTube is um, is irrelevant. It's been threatened. Well, you never know. Once you get into court, you never know. Yes, you do know, Dad. You know because you have you're either correct or you're incorrect. Mm -hmm. You have to fight, assuming that justice is going to prevail if you're correct. But it's like I remember. My parents settling a lawsuit with some renters who tried basically squatted and tried to claim the property was theirs, and they ended up settling it for less than the house was worth because my parents decided it wasn't worth the risk that the jury would make the bad decision, That's funny. even though they had all the evidence on their side. And and I remember even as a kid, maybe it was 14, 15, me having a, a furious argument with my parents about this at the dinner table. And saying, um, but Dad, this is the argument here. This is your property. You have the deed, right? They're simply making a claim that my grandfather, who wasn't even the owner of the home previously, was actually my grandmother. My grandfather promised it to them after he died, shortly before he was murdered unexpectedly. Uh, at his pharmacy. Um, if anything, it sounds like the defense lawyers are making a case for murder against these people who are suing us. Okay, let me talk about INFP having the worst stack, quote unquote. I don't know if you've seen Grogu. Uh, sure, I'll find the video. There's one video of him, or interview him. I'll find it. Uh, um, I don't know if you've seen the, the, the videos of coming Grogu, but I made a premiere coming up in a couple of days. I even made a, a pro, uh, trailer for it. And guess what it's called? Five unique power skills. No, INFP, five ultimate max skills that make them OP. So don't be telling me INFPs don't have a great stack. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a kind of luscious, wonderful stack that I, boy, 
I'm sure I'd be thrilled to live every day as an INFP. Wouldn't you, Rachel? Um, <laughs> Sorry to put you I, on the spot. I like feel that, like right? no. Because <laughs> um, like the only time I ever felt like I understood what it was like to be INFP, besides times with you, but um, I went through like a bad first breakup and I was just like huddled under my covers in my dark room listening to like sad music and I was just like this is this is what it is to be INFP. Taylor Swift. All right, here. Here you go. It starts with, oh, they've got mad skills. They're like Rimuru Sama. Like demon lords are so powerful. That's how you get views. <laughs> Somebody, I think it was uh, Boba Fett said, said to me this morning, if you really want to get views, why don't you just make videos telling people how great they are or whatever? I said, you know what? Fuck it. I will. And your INFP confirms that is accurate. Well, and he's right. He is so right. And I want you to know, Grogu, that your INFP boyfriend really needs to tune in on April 3rd at 9 a.m. to find out mm -hmm. the secret five unique skills of the INFP and make them the most OP of OP clerics. Yeah, they really are. Um, I remember really wanting to have an INFP as my supervisor at work. Like I always thought that but they never do. They never become the manager. Well, they I, only you know, INFP is the evolved form of HNFP, um, which actually starts out as uh, GNFP. It's got three levels of evolution. GNFP oh evolves into HNFP. Which finally, if you if you combine it with another Pokemon and sacrifice something, then he'll evolve fully into INFP. His he's got two attacks. Attack one is Moisten, in which the person that's they're fighting against becomes so covered in moisture that all their skin wrinkles up like their fingertips when they've been in the bath too long, but it's their whole body. As one of INFP's attacks is to Moisten. Yeah. Thing Moisten. Mm-hmm. The other INFP attack is to delay. Okay, so in other words, when you're trying to attack an INFP, all of a sudden your monster finds themselves deeply involved in a conversation about their feelings and forgets what they're doing about attacking. Hold on, we're not ready to take action yet. And before you know oh. it, you are just sitting there twiddling your thumbs as all your Pokemon are hashing it out with the INFP. About how they so, don't like be stuck in the Pokeballs. So... Yeah, uh, you, it's possible that you could be friends with an INFP, send a text message, hey, you want to go out to so-and-so's house? Uh, expect a response, maybe almost never. Okay, look, I would say, Boba Fett, no. The, the, the type that's really three seconds always away from crying is ENFP. Yeah, my dad is very close to crying during a lot of emotional stuff. Such as a regular conversation with his daughter or um, a regular conversation with me or, yeah. or going to the post office. You know, anything makes a, a older male ENFP cry. God. I'm ENTP and I have that quality too. It's just way less predominant in my nature. Yeah, and I, I think my dad's I don't mean to go on a tangent, but um, I think my dad is going through a little bit of um, empty nest syndrome. I didn't. Well, you know what I want to fill his nest with? Our familial love. Aww. I'm hoping he's going to come visit us. Yeah, he said come summer, so I really hope he does. I think he'll like it. He keeps on talking about how he's going to meet a California girl. I'm like, Dad. Valerie Alwood. We don't play Balderdash around here. 
Okay. We'll play Tiddlywinks. We'll play Hogwash. Mm. We'll play Shuck and Jive, but not Bulgur. Younger ones, not necessarily. ENFPs uh, are not necessarily super emotional when they're young. You got to remember the FI is a is a continually accruing wetening of the person's ontology. So by the time they're about to die, they're like, oh, the weight of all these things that I have valued and lost and gained and about yeah. it's just it's and the weight of how much the world is not as I wish it were as I yeah. wanted to be. It becomes overwhelming. They become big crowds. Oh. Now it also happens oh. to ENTPs, but fortunately, um, at, a, at an incredibly less brisk clip. And so, as a consequence, by the time ENTPs die, they're still not ready to die. They need another hundred years because they're not really feeling the pain of things very much, and they've got shit they're working on and interesting things to talk about. Which deck is the worst? Well. I mean, in terms of dealing with the modern world, I would say either INFP or ESFP. INFP because it can't take the action that's needed to actually get things accomplished. ESFP because they can't engage in any kind of map communication really at all um, without, I mean, they just can't do it at all. It's like... I've, I've kind of... It's so weird. I don't know. I, I've just from like examples from my life, I've noticed that ISTJs are really the only ones that can like totally handle them. Okay, Valerie Alderwood. That's twice now you've said the word balderdosh around here. I don't know if you're aware of this, but that's an anagram for a very dirty word. Is it? Yes. Lab Dasher. It's one of the, the newest, dirtiest slang words in the urban vocabulary. Lab Dasher. Oh. A Lab Dasher. You, you know, you can kind of intuit what it means, right? With a lab coat, and the, uh, the dashing, Lab Dasher, the okay. petri dishes. I think I got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty dirty. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, INFPs do cry, um, but what I have learned is that they like to cry by themselves. How would Grogu? Would your uh, boyfriend agree with that? Does he cry on like? Cause like I remember I had a friend who was an INFP for a while. She's still alive, but, like, we're not friends anymore. Um, so she's dead to you. Yeah. And um, she had a lot of emotional days where she would just lay in bed and watch TV or, like, cry the whole day. Uh, he won't admit it. He, well, you know. Let, oh. Genexia, listen to me. I'm tired of you colonizing my language with your patriarchal correctness paradigm okay i use the urban spelling of lab yeah. dasher l-a-b-d-a-s-h-z-z-e-r yeah valerie alwood that's what i found that my infp friend i mean she um you wouldn't think that she was emotional by uh just talking to her but on the days uh, the more you got to know her the more she revealed her uh vulnerable side which meant uh, I don't feel like hanging out today or like through text. I don't feel like hanging out today or um, I'm not going to come over because I feel really shitty. Like, I just feel like I can't do anything today. It's just, I just can't. It's so much on my mind about Bob and Steve yeah. and Joe. And it was usually. It's like I, I saw Joe out again last night. I just can't. I can't handle it. You know what usually gave her um anxiety was getting pressed on by her mom to get a job. Mm. So she was like constantly in this like cycle of like job interviews. Well, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be challenging for an IFP. Yeah. Who would rather not? Um, the thing is, okay, 
This is an interesting question. Which type is best at guessing exactly how long the microwave the food so it's just the right temperature? The answer is not INFJ. Um, Why not? No, I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, I don't. I don't remember exactly. It was quite a while ago, but there was one time when you either like cooked something twice as long as it should have been, or half as long as it should have been. You know, and you took it out, and we're just like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm great like, at that. It's clearly not done or it's clearly overdone or whatever. No, I took a I took a tip from an ENTP and just started to use numbers that I knew in my life. Like she used two 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 all the time, so she would put everything in for two two two, but she would constantly look at it to see if it was done. So I got into the habit of doing one twenty two for my address or 116 for my birthday. And that's when I put, that's how how many minutes I put stuff in for. It's really, really. But then you guys kidding. pull it out and check it and touch it. And then see. I know, it yeah, I know, I know. Okay, I gotta admit something. I gotta complain about Larry Elwood. I've never actually played Baldur Josh. I've never played Baldur Josh either, so. I don't even I know really, really what it is. Say. I was just talking out my ass. I was just, I, I should never claim to be an expert on Balderdash, but I did. And that's my point. I, I want to say that um, it's been lovely getting to spend time with the Strauss family. And I, I'm very happy that your family has not challenged me to a card game. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, there's a sort of universal understanding of an elderly gentleman like my dad um, whose wife is in the nursing home and uh, and how lonely he must be or how he'd want to spend a lot of time with us and how as a younger generation probably, you know, maybe wouldn't have enough time for him or something. Just not at all mm -hmm. like that. It, he's, he likes his space. He likes his space. He likes his shit that he does. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want me. Every time... I go in there and say, hey, you want to watch the games together or something? Ah, uh, yeah. not now, son. No, not not right now, please. Okay. And then and then he'll like catch me and go, ah, some little shred of Effie. Don't worry about that. It's fine. <laughs> I don't need your little shred of Effie. I don't play cribbage. I believe that's a racial slur mm -hmm. against Caribbeans. Is the coffee done? I didn't hear a beep. I believe you're supposed to call them Inuits from now on. Coffee? Instead of cribbage. I, I would love some coffee. Oh. Is it done? Well, that was the question. Oh, yeah, it was done ish, almost. Not oh, quite. it's almost done? Oh, Very almost. close. Um, okay, it's close to be done. So, you know, that's a very advantageous stack to have is T I T E S I, but it is the case that you are in I polar. And that makes for some weird conclusions that your experience, what you know from your experience is, is uh, all you can know. You can't really know anything without having some experiential link to it. And when you're, when some connection is made, they just go, okay, and uh, why are you telling me this kind of like that? Like they were over it. You can't predict the future. Look, we know that we ain't heard this before. We know how you're an optimist, but I'm a pessimist. Plan for the worst. Uh, son, son, it's, it's just not how things work, son. Well, <laughs> it's true the path only forks to the right if you refuse to acknowledge the existence of the left hand path. You know, uh, son, there is no left here. It's just right. You can see it right in front of us. Why would we go over there and fall off the edge? Because there's a fucking path right there, too. You know, that counts. That's not a path. Being correct and making a good arguments, that's not a way to accomplish anything. <laughs> he didn't say that explicitly. But that's what he's saying, basically. Being correct, having the right arguments, all that kind of shit. No, he doesn't still think I'm a stenographer. I, I, he's still kind of confused about what it is I'm doing. And he, <laughs> he wants some kind of answer as to, 
are you are you doing anything of any productive value back there or something? But he never really asked me that per se, but you get that sense. And um, when, you know, when I get a sense that, I mean, there's, there's a timing arc to everything in life, you know? Not that he would be aware of it really, but uh, clearly timing now is for for us to start putting in motion shit that's outcome oriented. And we're still gonna live stream, but like the video that I put up today, the two videos I put up today about uh, the five unique things, those are designed to get results. The second one is especially designed to get results because I even uh, set up a premiere, put a trailer, did all that kind of shit. So super TE for him. How big is the world? Just big enough. Okay, well, Jeff Shaw, do you know the answer to this question? It's a famous one. How long should a man's legs be? Anybody know the answer? How long should a man's legs be? Anybody? 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 The answer, of course, is long enough to reach the ground. Oh. The Abraham Lincoln classic. Yes, long enough to reach the ground. Credited Abraham Lincoln. Oh. Um, Woody Allen actually wrote quite a hilarious play, like one act play, about uh, about this quote, in which Woody Allen speculates in the play. Basically, he imagines a situation in which he, he asks the question. Basically, well, under what circumstances was Abe Lincoln asked the question, <laughs> right? And so, in the play. Yes, Abe Lincoln um, rushed back into the Oval Office and Abe Lincoln's secretary is there and he says, oh, you should have seen it, Marley. You should have seen it. Uh, I'm sure it was quite fantastic, sir. Why, you didn't even ask me what it was. Oh, what about it, sir? A joke. They broke up, I tell you. The whole crowd was laughing. I see. Well, aren't you going to ask me what it was? What was the joke, sir? Well, you see this man, he asked, he said, how long should a man's legs be? And I said, get this, long enough to reach the ground. <laughs> um, I don't mean to disrupt your, your enjoyment of this, sir, but I, I'm wondering why did he ask you that question? You're missing the point, Batters. The point is they were all laughing. Wouldn't you have laughed if you had been there? It's a hilarious joke. <laughs> You know, I, I, I do get you, Mr. President. I'm sorry. And then later they catch the scene. He's pacing back and forth. And Mary Todd Lincoln's like, Abe, hey, what's the matter? And it's like, I can't get it out of my mind, Mary. This man, why did he ask me this question? How long should a man's legs be? But your answer was fantastic. I know it was a great answer. It was hilarious. <laughs> but still, I can't get this man out of my mind. Then he goes and, and chases the guy down, and it turns out that, you know, well, the next scene is the guy's returning home to his wife, okay? The guy who asked the question. And um, the wife says, you know, Hubert, did you do it? Did you ask about our son? And, and he was like, you're not going to believe this, Hubert. I, I, I just, I don't know. I just failed. I, I tried to ask questions. I just asked the wrong question. <laughs> said, well, what did you ask? I asked the president how long a man's legs should be. <laughs> how long a man's legs should be? But why? I don't know. I panicked. I panicked. <laughs> and what did he say? Long enough to reach the ground. <laughs> Abe Lincoln comes bursting in. And he says, you know, I have to know. Finally, I value you. Why did you ask me this question? And he says, uh, he basically just he panicked. Goes, what did you want? My son, he was caught sleeping on guard duty during in the war, in the Civil War. They're going to execute him. I came to ask for a pardon. <laughs> he says, oh, it shall be yours. I, a pardon for this boy, for sure. I'm just so relieved now to know why. <laughs> I'm so relieved now to get to the bottom of this or something. <laughs> That's the end of the play, right? Oh. 
It's like a one act mini play. Play the third one. Wise or otherwise is a good board game. Apples and apple, apples to apples and cards against humanity. But Balderosh is still the best of all. I mean, I don't think I've ever played Balderosh. <laughs> I don't like cards against humanity. It's like it's like here, play with someone else's any. Yeah, it is. I guess that's why I like it. <laughs> You know what I liked about it, or what I found interesting about playing Cards Against Humanity is that, like, you can tell who you sync with, like, who's on the same, like, wavelength with, as you, if they pick you, your card. You probably did. Um, I, I, I was always surprised. I'll tell you who won most of all when I played was ENFJ. ENFJ usually won. Oh. Uh, there's an ENFJ who was with us, uh, living with us at the time. And, that makes sense. And he usually won because he can tell what's universally the most snappy. And also, he can read the other people and see what mm -hmm. they're going to be playing, you know, mm -hmm. like poker. So, ENFJ, INFJ, they're going to do what you were describing. That's not how I play the yeah. game at all. I just go, okay, well. Well, I had, like, serious, like, emotional, like, if I was, like, I had um a few embarrassing, like, you know how we were saying, embarrassing as, like, holy shit, like, we didn't choose any of the same cards, like, I... You know, it can it can be embarrassing. You're you're like with someone, and then they don't pick any of your cards. That's kind of like I don't know. It just like psychologically for me was like, oh, you well that one's shitty. And it's yours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. I yeah, exactly, oh. exactly. It would really disappoint me. I'd be like, holy shit. crap! Does this person even know me? It shows a lot about psychological compatibility, or at least intuition. Um, and Effie. Hey, 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 hey. I want to say, 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 say something to today, today. I want to talk about a show that we all should play and watch every single day. We've been watching Mr. Show with Bob and David, and uh, hey. It's shockingly impressive. It's incredibly, incredibly good. It's like I can't. There's, there can't possibly be anything else from that period of the '90s that has retained just this sparkle of genius, despite aging and despite being comedy for you know 25 years. Yeah, Mr. Show is astonishingly good. Now, not every episode is just as good as every other episode. Not every chunk of every episode is good. There are some occasional slow episodes or slow points, but when when an episode is hitting on full full cylinders and going and it's, it's hilarious all the way through. Originally, I watched one earlier. I was just fucking I was rolling, crying. It's I so like... funny. It, the show is so funny. It's, it's oh incredible. yeah, when they had that dude who was like <laughs> dancing like. Michael Jackson, and he was like fucking waiting in line, and he, <laughs> he was right. doing that dance. I was, I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing. The thing is, a lot of the humor in it would probably get cancel culture these days. Yo, like, totally. There's this great it's... skit where, um, where David plays uh, a normal high school kid of two parents who are both retarded. And oh my god! <laughs> that too. I was it was rolling. so funny. Oh my, oh my god. god! So funny. It was so funny. Those guys are absolutely geniuses. Yeah, they really are. I, I can't. I can't remember enjoying a comedy thing that much in oh, ages, yeah, maybe ever. You know, it's like I, I watch a lot of shit. I, I see a lot of media. I know what what pops and what doesn't. I recently watched you know. Oh, a, a season or so of Strangers with Candy, which I liked, but which is if you play it next to 
um, Mr. Show, it's like playing Judas Priest next to a Led Zeppelin. And he's like, the, the difference is so clear. Um, Mr. Show is just lights out better. Um, while Stranger with Candy is still quite good. Dustin Salisbury, I'm telling you, it is so funny. Ah, uh, just. It's, it's under talked about, under appreciated, under watched. It's this, you know, it's like occasionally I'll hit, find something that I really rave about and say, okay, well, this is one of my favorite shows of all time or whatever. Like Bojack Horseman. Bojack Horseman is is the same level of genius as Mr. Show. Bojack Horseman is probably a little bit more consistent because it doesn't have to rely on skits. But uh, I mean, I just want to like you know, all praises due to those guys. They're fucking genius. Uh, and it's so hard to do what what they what they did, which is to be that curve surfy that hilarious have it stand as has time that well be that creative that clever um it's almost impossible to do what is all this talk about balzardash you are gonna make me start to finkel swinger uh, when a man finkel swingers watch out that means he's had enough and he's expressing it Here's a word I made up too. Waddle coot. A waddle coot is the male version of camel toe. So if you got on tight slacks and you can see the outline of the schlong, that's called waddle coot. Now let's say you got on shorts and you're revealing a bit of scroat. That's called a wriggling waddle coot. Or a wriggler. Waddle coot. C O O T, Waddle Cute. Originally, it was Waddle Cuter, but uh, people started dropping the errs. You know, you can't. You, nobody owns language; it evolves. Um, what was that word I had earlier today that was a combination of starving and something else? Surviving? I was starving and driving at the same time? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's see how quick Winston's mom's trigger finger was. I didn't even have time to read that thing. Okay. <laughs> That is unfair. I got to tell you, I cannot, I cannot, cannot support that particular timing up. I just, I get being quick on the trigger finger, but I just don't see anything that is just fine. That's what I call a, uh, uh, Sacage of Warbler, which is a combination of Sacagawea and Warbling, which is to say, it seems like a good guide to organ in the at first, and then you realize it's just a bird. Yes, Valerie, how was once you explain the concept? That's why I started doing that. I thought it'd be fun. Yeah, I know. You're and I. It's is okay. And I. It's don't, my... don't worry. I'm not annoyed at you or anything. I've done it myself. I'm just, I'm playing prevent defense on the, on the upcoming. Ah, 
I do. All right. So let's talk about some important words we need to include more in our language. Like, say, paladinize. To turn what you're doing normally into a super righteous act. Oh, like Joan of Arc? So, like, for example, I'm not just going through Taco Bell. This Taco Bell is saving humanity. That's oh. paladinizing your Taco Bell experience. Bum fuzzle teradiddle, Billings Gate snickersnee, Widdershins. Hmm. Well, <coughs> plethora. I like the word plethora too. <coughs> I have a I have a very clear and determinate SI link with that word. Who knows where I what I think when I see that word? Well, I'll tell you. Three amigos. Because El Guapo, he's talking to his, his helper guy like Manuel or whatever his name is, and he says he's he's upset about his pending 40th birthday. El Guapo is, and he says, uh, Manuel, so you have prepared for my birthday party, have you not? Oh, see, si, senor, we have prepared everything for you. I see. So the, the woman, she is ready for me, you see? Hey, guapo, a woman is like a flower. You have to let her open. Okay. Well, do I have a lot of presents? Oh, see, si, a lot of presents. Would you say I have... A plethora of presents. Oh, see, si, senor, you have a plethora. Manuel, do you even know what a plethora is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what could it be if you are not angry at Manuel? Well, maybe because the flower is not opening up for you? No. Oh. Could it be you're not angry at Manuel, but because it's your 40th birthday party? See, that's that scene. It's so funny. I remember it quite well. <laughs> Would you say I have a plethora of piñatas? <laughs> that's what it is, it piñatas. <laughs> Would you say I have a plethora? Oh, see, si, senor, you have a plethora of piñatas. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that movie's fantastic. That movie's fantastic. But um, not as funny as Mr. Show. <laughs> just, the thing is, I don't even like, I hate slapstick humor in general. I hate it. Falling down, a bunch of, you know, whoa, 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 yeah. STP stuff or SFP stuff. I, just, I hate it. That show does slapstick stuff so well. Like, there's this one scene where this guy keeps falling over and knocking over a thimble collection. <laughs> and I just, I was just dying. It was so funny. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I had to re show it to Rachel because it was just like, oh my God. So and it's funny. like, every time you think, <laughs> it always catches you by surprise. Yeah. You think, because he's like telling a tale and you think he's going to like finish it and then. Whoa. See, I have too much FI for that, I guess. Or SI, SI resonance or something. I hate watching people hurt themselves. Make me feel like, uh, six my stomach or something. Nicky guy is pretty funny. But anyway, the way that Mr. Show does it, though, is fantastic. The, the guy who, who kept falling over into the temples... He's a really good physical actor. He yeah. he plays a lot of sort of how does it go? Dark around, dance around kind of things and stuff. Yes, yes. And he's really good at, at falling. And uh, there's this other skit that I saw that was one of the most uncomfortable skits in the world to watch, but brilliant and hilarious too. Which is a skit where the actor comes into audition for a part, and it's called. Part he's doing 
is called um, the audition. And he, he, he goes in, he's like, okay, I'm ready to begin. Can I use this chair? Oh, yeah, sure. Go. No! That's part of the thing. Oh, okay, I'm better. Can I use this chair? <laughs> can I use this chair? And then the people watching get more and more comfortable. I, I said, can I use this chair, please? I'm asking you a question. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No! <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it, it's so conceptually brilliant. Um, and it's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, where can you watch it? I had to, I, you buy it for five bucks a season on YouTube. This is where I got it. I, I paid $5 yeah. for a full season of it, and it's absolutely worth every penny. It really is. I, I, um, I watched the first season of Mr. Show by myself, and yeah, it's really nice watching it with you because, like, I'm glad you're finding the hilarity in it as well. It's nice to be laughing with you. <laughs> what I like. <laughs> the reason one, the uh, Church of Satan, when they have the guy in the wheelchair come, David, oh David the guy in the wheelchair, and when they ask him why he's in the wheelchair, he says, he doesn't like to stand up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, which one do you want? Uh, it doesn't matter. Whichever one you like least. Um, I'll take this one. Okay. Uh, it's a toss up, so I like it more. It's just this one seems more thirst quenching. It is more thirst quenching, <laughs> but I don't want to deny your thirst the capacity for quenching. Oh, no, no, I I'm waiting for the coffee. When quench to quench or quenched, um, the other thing is the other person who. I think generally did incredibly creative forward thinking stuff for his time was the exact opposite. So Bob and David were pretty edgy. Steve Martin, when he was doing stand-up comedy, was the exact opposite of edgy. But he was absolutely hilarious anyway. Mm -hmm. Um he he made a lot of jokes like uh you know, he sits down with Johnny Carson, and the first thing he says is, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're going to ask me. Johnny Carson says, oh, yeah, what? He says, you're going to ask me, Steve, how can you be so fucking funny? Except it's not the, the uh, there's no fucking on the TV one, but, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And He's other really other funny. Yeah. Well no no, they don't even include he just leaves the fucking out. But in another another in another rendition of it or whatever, uh record, he includes it. Oh, that's so funny. But um and then you know, see the what's his name? Freaking Johnny Carson says, uh well how, how can you? Well it's I, uh, you see, if I'm going to be funny, I need to feel funny. So before each show, I slip a slice of bologna into each shoe. <laughs> that way I feel funny. <laughs> I was like, that's very silly jokes. Comedy for dogs. If you haven't seen cat juggling, I don't find particularly funny. But comedy for dogs is a great idea for a skit, which is basically... He gets a bunch of dogs to go up on stage and he pretends to do comedy for them as they're all trying to like walk away from him and ignoring them and shit. And he's like, oh no, I'm dying up here. Yeah. You know? Hello, my cock. Barnes always a comic that I liked too, even when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. One of my favorite Steve Martin jokes, I've said it before, I'll say it again, is uh, I'm so mad at my mother. She's 109 years old. She calls me up. She wants to borrow $10 for some food. I said, hey, I work for a living. So I got her carrying barbells up to the attic. <laughs> it's just... I was a little kid that made me crack up. <laughs> um, You know that my cock is known as the cactus of the sea? I think maybe the interaction between you and Winston's mom reminded me of Valerie Elwood. Hi, Jeebus. There's no snap at you, Valerie Elwood. You are as wise as 40 wisdoms plus 40 intelligences minus 20 wisdoms plus 60 wisdoms. It's a lot That's of wisdom. A lot of wisdom. If you want to make up words for Balderdash, I will say, though, uh, Valerie Alwood, I agree. People getting hurt is not funny. Um, I never found that funny. But um, right, there's this vine of a guy who is shoveling. So he's shoveling and he gets onto a patch of ice. And he's like wobbling around trying not to fall. He and he just keeps his balance. Like it's the most amazing video. So good. Like you think he's gonna fall, he just keeps his um balance the whole time. It's so funny. He looks like Gumby. He's like <laughs> Hey Sean Ryan Baron, what's going on? So, good words should have an important logic to them, like cobble straight or delineate or delineate finalia. Delineate, delineate, delineate finalia. Delineate, yeah, delineate finalia. The delineariferalia is how you should say it. Is the stuff that's left over from when you delineariferate, which of course is to con concurrently delineate and iterate. So you're doing a laundry list of distinctions, basically, mm. is to de to delineariferate. And if you have objects that are left over from doing that process, that's referred to as delineariferalia. I want you all to practice those words at home. Delina. Delina Rita Rafanalia. Delina Rita Rafanalia. Delina Delina. Rita. Rita. Rafanalia. Rafanalia. Delina Rita Rafanalia. Delina Rita Rafanalia. Delina Rita Rafanalia. Dolina Rita Rafanelia. Dolina Rita Rafanelia. Rafanelia. These bones be toasty. I like that. My dad really likes that sketch. Valerie Alwood, wild and crazy. Two wild and crazy guys. I and they play like the guys for check.
Digi Necro Pirates. I wonder. The Linda Rich of Riff, like this. The Linda Rich of Nalia. Delina it Ifanalia. Delina Rita Finalia. Delina Rita Rita Finalia. I put an extra raw in there for some reason. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's a word I made up. Mm. Um as is Digi Necro Pirates, which are um digital pirates who steal MP3s. Using necromancy, <laughs> they take over dead people's bodies and use their accounts to steal MP3s. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so digit necro piracy, digit necro piracy is digital piracy accomplished uh, using dead bodies as puppets, basically. Um, Apollosan esque means you're like Rachel. Did I tell you that your mom pronounced my last name correct today? Yeah. yeah, as I was leaving, she's reading my name tag, and she was like, Rachel La Pelosa. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she said it right. She started laughing. Mm. That, was, that was cool. Yeah. I was impressed because not many people get my last name right. A lot of people pronounce it wrong. So for, for Jane Strauss... Be. She still got her. She still got it. Yeah, she still got it. She really does. I don't care if I'm your new girlfriend every single time. <laughs> <laughs> It means the hairy woman esque. <laughs> okay, here's a good word Laosha creep. So, so Laosha creep means to go in hoping to side with South Vietnam and hold off the North Vietnamese invaders and end up invading Laos instead or bombing it. So that's what it means to Laosha creep. My cough chill. I mean, I get it. I like the passion there, but uh, careful. Rock sand. <laughs> well, uh, you know, like. Hold on. I'll describe exactly what happened. I think you could say she. Uh, Vibration dissolved you. She vibration dissolved oh, you. Oh, I'm so sorry, dude. It's okay. My cock will be fine. Okay, Believe me. Good. It, That's all that matters. My cock is a robust and resilient performer. He's ready to uh, to come back from even the staunchest of beatings, say, by a Muhammad Ali in his prime. Or oh. perhaps a Joe Lewis. Classic. I don't know if you guys have your penis be a sparring partner for famous boxers, but I typically do. You know. 
I mean, why I keep it in shape? My opinion is, been spent so much time working out and building up his pecs and stuff and his biceps. It seems a shame not to let him fight. Solving a problem by by ad living, what problem? My Cox vibe is not a problem. That okay? word is so. I am in charge of that, not that. Okay, that's not in charge of me. I'm in charge of that. Yes. So I'm a lucky lady. If my cock is complaining about its vibes being ruined, well, it needs to remember just how accommodating a girlfriend it has. I hope that it, like, I'm really, that really makes a lot of difference to me. I'm very, I take my job seriously, guys. Yeah. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, Um, I like that song, Roxanne. I wasn't trying to ruin your vibe, I promise you. I thought you, it's just that sometimes, like, when a, one person takes up the whole screen, it's you know, the under fungal is to jiggle one's undercarriage in a fondle like fashion. Underfungal to, under jig to jiggle another person's undercarriage in a fondle like fashion. That's so spell addict while in your string. A T T I C. <laughs> that is such a silly joke. My name's not sweet. No, the Genexial ruined my vibe. Not you, sweetheart. Yeah, you spelled it wrong. Her name's not Sweatheart, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you can't be condescending if you can't spell sweet. I only like... Okay, I'm going to say something feminist. I only like my boyfriend calling me Sweetheart. So That's fair. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a little condescending. Yeah. Like, you don't know me. But you know what, though, Rachel? <laughs> he, if he's going to call you Sweetheart... We can call him Sport, Tiger, okay, or that, Slugger. That's legit fair. That's or, all I care about guy. is the fairness of it. <laughs> Sport, old pal. I, I think Slugger is good. Slugger's a really good one. Or little guy. Little guy. Hey, hey little, guy. little guy. <laughs> oh, um, no, you can't call me based. I'll tell you why. Because that would imply that somehow I was assumed by a little bee's frame of reference. But the fact is, not only can he have none of my bitches, he's lucky to retain his own. Oh, you're 15? That's cool. I remember when I was 15. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed my, my uh, from 15 to like... I expect to be 15 pretty soon. It seems like I've been 14 now for about 40 years. You have been uh, maturing in different yeah. ways. I've been losing hair where once I had hair. <laughs> what? What? What's going on right now? Oh, he's about to get his ass hidden. Certainly put a time out. I don't know what you were listening to, but no, yeah, I don't no. call my, my girlfriend bitch. No. No. I don't think I've calls. ever called you that No, once. he's called me that once when I or maybe once. fully deserved it. Fully deserved it. I was a total bitch. Okay, so. I, 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 mean, but I, I, certainly don't I was asking it. for it. I was asking for it. I'm telling you. I definitely don't make a habit of calling you any kind of bad Never. Thing. No. It's always pleasant. But now, now that the song Roxanne was being sung, I have So Lonely stuck in my head. The thing is, I've met so many, like, very intelligent, fun to hang out with, interesting to talk to high school kids, or even middle school kids, you know? In, in debate, anyway. So, it's like... Um, 
I kind of feel like defensive on their behalf. Like, um, I mean, being 15 or 30 or 40 or 50 makes no difference because you can still act like a human being. I don't think people are unable to act uh, civil when they're 15 years old. You just maybe some people like to excuse it at that point, but I never have, and I've never had any problem with people being like that in real life, you know? You've had a lot of experience with it, too. Oh, well, yeah, I would. I'm sure I'd kick all kinds of ass at Battlefield. <sighs> I'd kick too much ass, probably. How does it, how does it, how does it work? Can you give us an example? Is it like, really play it, like play it. Yeah, but, yeah, play it. Yeah, play, play it with us right now. What do you do? How do you do? I'd probably be stumped. <sighs> oh, come on so, now. God, you hate monkeys. They're so stupid. Oh, horse wampers here? No. Oh. Horse wampers and I were talking, you could ask an election where you're only, where you're open to only invite guests you know in front door and feel like getting loaded. No, it's not a problem. Yeah. I, I'd rather have it be open and people, you know, it's like yes. there are some people who spend a lot of their time trying to, to charge these castle walls with their horse and their lance, you know, and it's like silly. Well, the truth is that like, Okay, so I've known your channel, or I've been active in participating with you on this channel for over a year. So, I mean, it seems like people come and go, so having an open door policy is better to attract new people. Um, well, Valerie Alwood, how does it work? Though? Do they give you like a picture and say, come up with a word for it? Do they give you... Concepts right. or what? Yeah. So, like, is it like you have a word and you have to make up a definition for it, like that isn't that doesn't describe the word exactly, something like that? I don't like private clubs. I just don't. I don't like VIP rooms. I don't like private clubs. Speaking of private clubs, your mom was in a sorority. Oh, right, well, she was in uh, Delta Kappa Gamma. It's not really a sorority. It's like a professional, a professional organization. Oh, they of. take their stuff seriously. It's. I think it's like a educators sorority okay. or something. Yeah, yeah. They do I, that. I don't that. know. I could look it That's up. That's cute. That's yeah, she cute. Was in that. she, she used to periodically have to go to Delta Kappa Gamma meetings. Aww. To be too openly romantic with Laotians. Okay, so I mean, it would give you a clue like that. It would be... Um, Intimate? Pubdisalaus. Pubdisalau. Pubdisalau. Um, now that's public display at Laotian. Oh. Oh my gosh. I don't understand this game at Pub all. Disallow. It is a public display at Laotian. Oh, there you go. Winston's oh, mom. that's adorable. That's, that you're, that's like so... That's really cute. What does Johnny Laden think? Johnny Laden thinks he thinks. What does Johnny Laden think? How do you play it? I like the, the cadence of the sentence. What does Johnny Laden think? When he's sodden in his drink. And these clogs upon his sink. Link to frogs. From wink to wink. 
All right. I hate monkey. I mean, it's like these people are so persistent. It's weird. Um, a lot of people don't have anything else to do. It may just be one guy. You know, it's like yeah. it, it is this time. Obviously, he's the same guy. He keeps coming in, but um, it's hard to say whether it's it's always the same guy. You know, two players bet and guess what? A fourth party. <laughs> Where's the third party? <laughs> I see one and two and four, but no third party. I don't know. He just, he really wants to do something spiteful to get me in some way. And he, of course he can't because one, he's totally disempowered in this forum. In other words, he's got no capacity to do things. I'm the person who can do shit or my mods. And two, he's uh, too dumb. I mean, he's not, he's not going to fool anybody ever being that dumb, you know? What happens if we pretend we can't see them? Just let them comment. They may think they are muted. So that is one way of like handling it. But obviously, there's got to be a point where you draw the line because, like, well, well, if they get a tacky. Here's the thing there's a false assumption that. Talking about this in this fashion is bad because it's either giving them attention they want or because it's a subject that you don't particularly like. But the reality of that is um, it's it's not a problem because uh, because I'm only you know, there are sometimes when I get dragged into some arguments I don't want to get dragged into. But I find this topic interesting because it's such an obviously pathological behavior, right? It's uh, like the, the, the thing that makes something spite is uh, <laughs> is um, the fact that you're you're willing to take some harms yourself if you could just incur if you can cause harms to the other person. So there's no there's no self interest in it. It's just prioritizing harming your enemy um, over any productive use of your time just because you're so, you're so you're directing so much anger at them um i have a question that has to do with astrology i'm sorry to change the subject but okay. Go for it. um does anyone know what planets are in retrograde if there are any planets in retrograde right now I feel like pretty sluggish for some reason, but I'm not gonna fall asleep. Like I know that already. So it's like, is Mars or like Saturn in? Okay, well, see, that's in that instance, it's uh, so it's like. Trust me, girly Violet, if you look at all of these people who came in uh, and this, the, like, get booted, come in, get booted, come in. No, no icon and uh, all uh, lowercase. Now, granted, you might say the same thing about Valerie Alwood. But uh, my point is, I know the girly Violet was the same guy. He was trying a different tactic. I mean, the thing is, that's the thing about NI, right? I can't prove it. And you might say I shouldn't, I shouldn't act on it. But there are some times when the NI is sufficient to tip the, the balance over, you know? Nothing is in retrograde. Maybe that's why. Nothing's in retrograde, and are you feeling what are you feeling? Frustrated? Just sluggy. Or sluggy? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. You didn't sleep that much last night. True. Doy, a doy. Remember our little 
stay up party. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, we did have fun staying up. I like staying up. The only thing that I was worried about was being late for your mom. So I slept in my clothes. Well, I didn't even sleep at all last night. I'm going to sleep mm -hmm. tonight, but, um, you know, the first day I got it, I took half of the prescribed amount. The second day I had it, I took the prescribed amount. And, you know, yeah, that's fair enough, all over my hand. It's just, uh, hmm. at that point, I, I just didn't even want to play anymore. So, you know, if I was wrong, and that person can come back and say, um, actually, I'm a real person. You know, they might not, but if they feel like they were uh, being unfairly treated, they might want justice, you know? Yeah. You're given a word from the Oxford Dictionary that no one uses, kind of like what Eric was doing. Oh. You make up a definition or the word. Eric would kill at that. Mm. I think I would have, like, a couple zingers here and there, but I'm any ignoring, so like I'd really have to think about it, right? I mean, Winston's mom, you know what's funny is that my moon is in Scorpio in Vedic astrology, so maybe it was like. Party time. I think it was full moon too. I don't know. This is gastro flabbing. Gastro flabbing is being flabbergasted about food. See, like that. That like is so. I bullied you. I mean, I didn't. They give you a word. Okay, so like Eric would make up the word and then I would make up the definition for it. Ah, okay. So come up with a word, Valerie Elwood. And let's see if we can find a definition for it. Yeah. Batter patty. What's the definition? What's the definition of batter patty? A baseball player's hamburger? Nope. Close, but no. It's a pancake. Let's just fall, guys. Oh, it's a real thing. Oh. I mean, I made up the word. There's another word right, for, for pancake. There's another word for a real word. word. Right. Well, it makes sense, oh, right? Oh, batter patty. Because it's a patty and it's made of batter. I'm understanding slowly. Okay, all right. No, I gave I gave the word and Legend Fall came up with that. Yeah. Question. That's what happened. You got it right. Or there's not supposed to be a right you got answer. Right, yeah. Okay. KP, who said who's KP? You know, to be Wilhelm is to be overwhelmed by Wilhelm. There's like that classic line from um, 10 Things I Hate About You where the girl's like, I know you could be overwhelmed and underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? I love that line. There's another word uh, I was thinking about that was kind of like that the other day. Uh, um. What was it? Ennui. I know what that word means. Is it just a if it's just a vocabulary game, I'll do fine on it. Are we supposed to make up a new definition for it? Um Oh, that's so alarming. The a, a new definition?
What? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, me too. I'm so confused. I'm going to take a bong rip and pour some coffee. Yeah, Enwhelm thy, enwhelm thyself in thine work that the Lord mayeth um, Brakamana Stantiate As a prayer, and while thyself and thine work, the Lord may in in Braca monastitiate prongs of the Holy Spirit, which is to embrace you by transubstantiating manna directly into your stomach. How many prongs does the Holy Spirit have? If the Holy Spirit were a tree, could you identify what kind of tree it was by looking at its leaves? I mean, you know, it, the thing is, I don't, I hate the idea of, of sort of going, well, he's young. It, it's just such an insult to intelligent young people. There are plenty of young people who do not act like that. The problem isn't that he's young, it's that he's dumb. Now, whether or not he's full of cum remains to be seen. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame him for being a little mad since we all got together and been cocky all over his mom's face and everything. But, you know, it's like she was passing out free tickets in the street. I just said, well, she begged me to take one. Please. I said, fine, I'll be there. Wow, oh, you're so good with follow through. There's no such thing as well. Okay, but there is a helm. Okay. A whelm is a, a helm for a woman. Thanks, Winston's mom. Um, we got them from Eric's clients. Oh, yeah, my client gave these to us. They're pretty rad, huh? Yeah. We got this one here. It's a little cat. We got this one here. It's another little cat. We got this one here. It's another little cat. Three cats on this mug. And I've got a moon. Fucking T. And, or S E, I should say, probably. And the sun. Well, Rachel, what I've done so many times, even as recently as maybe a month or two ago or something, is this move. I wonder what time it is. Well, I've got a cup of oh, my hand. Oh, shit. Brawr. Uh, uh, <laughs> shit on it. Into a so, that's into a tardation. That's a word that you made up. True that. Is this marble? No, I think it's pottery. Yeah. But it's got a signature on the bottom, which means it's fancy. Mara. It's from Sedona. Yeah, it's from Sedona. Okay. I wonder if they... They went to Sedona to enjoy some wine tasting. Ayahuasca. And they brought back this amazing pottery for us. Goldie wound. Goldie locked is when you are stuck in one location because 
and all directions around that location are either too hot or too cold. <laughs> or too big or too small. I can't leave here. Why? Because it's fucking freezing outside. You're Goldilocks. You're stuck in the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, not too cold. You can't leave because... How many days of video total have you recorded? I mean, how many, how many total hours of video? Goldie baited. Being goldie baited is being drawn into a temperate zone because a predator there wants to eat you. And sees that you're cold. <laughs> they can imagine you being cold. Being golden, being Goldie Lock, Lock, being Goldie Lockian is different than being Goldie Lock. Being Goldie Lock is being stuck someplace because you've got the wrong temperature around you, except for that one place. Mm. Being Goldie Lockian is being forced to stay in one location because you're studying the works of John Locke. And you can't stand the non locking in economic policies outside of this restricted zone. It's a word that doesn't have a lot of usage. You know, I, I think a, a, an excellent word uh, in general is spoon giving logic. Spoon giving logic refers to the, uh, the famous quote often attributed to forget his name. But I'll remember what I said the quote. He went to visit China and he saw all these manual laborers digging with shovels and stuff and says, why don't you give them modern construction equipment? He says the Chinese guy says, because we have to have all these people that have jobs. And then Mark uh, Freeman, whatever his name is. Um, Milton Freeman Milton Friedman um, says uh, well why not give them all spoons then spoon giving logic spoon giving logic is a good term because it makes clear what the problem is right why do you have all these people digging with regular shovels when you have a backhoe over there Mm -hmm. Well, because all these people need jobs. Well, why not just give them all spoons then? You can employ a lot more people if you made them all dig with spoons. <sighs> so that's one kind of bad logic. Another kind, lightning detector. Lightning detection. Lightning detector logic is... <coughs> <coughs> My daughter died in a tragic lightning accident in the park. <coughs> Therefore, we need legislation. Lightning detector logic could also be called COVID logic. You know, because you can make a reasonably supportable claim that some lives will be saved by an action that is justified. I mean, come the fuck on. This is a jobs program, to which Milton replied, oh, I thought you were trying to build a canal. If it's jobs you want, then you should give these workers spoons, not shovels. Yeah, people who try to disconnect purposeful outcomes from, from work make me want to punch them in the face. Opaloid made up the term <coughs> logic to represent um, to represent feelings logic. Thank you, everybody, for helping. Yeah, thank you. 
Oh, you are beating me to the punch. So, I mean, of course, that guy put in a lot of effort into just setting that whole thing up. And it just it lasted 30 seconds and then he's gone. You know, it's like it, it makes so little economic sense. You know, it's like he's giving himself spoons. It, it, spoon giving logic is terrible. But it's insane when you're giving yourself spoons. The job he's trying to do is impossible to to make any money on, so to speak, right? It's like he's going to spend way more time and energy <coughs> setting up his capacity to <coughs> spam for five seconds than he'll ever get out of it in terms of impact that he wants. So it's like, it's sort of a an operationalized definition of insanity. The spite is, you know, the desire to do harm so much that you'll kamikaze yourself or whatever you know yeah. waste all your time and energy and yeah that's what it is mm -hmm. waste of time and energy um here's the thing uh you know i don't like leaf blowers at all and this morning I was sweeping the patio off and I swept it with this broom, you know. I thought, why don't everybody do this? But then I also realized as I was doing it, man, these things, these little flowers, the avocado tree drops are a pain in the ass to get out. They get stuck in the cracks and everything. It sure would be easier with a leaf blower. <laughs> um, what was my youth like? It was mostly great. It's mostly great. Uh, I I encountered a little bit of bullying. I uh, had a couple of points in my in my schooling. Um, you know, I grew up in a time when there wasn't any connectivity between people besides the na native connectivity of geography. So you knew the people you grew up around, and that was it. Uh, I was fortunate in one sense that my parents moved here to this house when I was three years old. And at the same time, there were many other children at just the same age, basically, on this block or the surrounding blocks. So there were lots of kids playing in the streets when I was growing up, and I was friends with them all. And, uh, you know, it was the 70s, so we were, we were set loose into the streets. We were sent out, out to play. Like summer vacation, it was okay. Out of the house, go play, and we'd come back when we'd come back. You know, there was it was a time of no helmets. It was a time of of no. Uh, in fact, it was a time when you had to be super dorky or have a dad that just wouldn't let you take them off, like mine, uh, to have reflectors on your bike because they were considered not cool. <laughs> you must take reflectors off your bikes. Of course, I wasn't allowed to. Was your husband an ESTJ? Are you? I mean, yeah. There's an adult or two who troll here and are just grown school yard bullies. Then there are a few people who are holding grudges like the last one, and the dude just likes to bug you. <coughs> um. Uh, I think it is the best era to live in, for sure. I mean, one of the reasons why I was bullied was simply that the world was somewhat less evolved back then. People were, were, you know, um, mercilessly bullied if they were different enough. I wasn't that different compared. To, I mean, I was, and I was capable of handling myself okay. You know, I. I didn't get the idea that sometimes you just gotta fucking sock somebody, but eventually I did get that idea. Uh, and once I got that idea, then it wasn't a problem anymore, you know. But I, the worst memories I have from my childhood are, are 
instances when I participated in bullying others, because of course it was a time prior to any kind of woke policing, right? So there was shit tons of ontological aggression towards people on race, sexuality, uh, even gender, uh, although not so much gender as the other ones maybe, but the thing is what, what they call bullying now and what they call cyberbullying, it may be bad and everything, but the kind of bullying that kids uh, underwent, like say when I was in middle school or something, when there's, it's like on the one hand, being online makes you subject to certain kinds of attacks, but on the other hand, being online makes it possible for you to find people that, you, that don't attack you. And um, and that's very much not possible for, wasn't possible for some of the people in, when I was in middle school. Um, I was fortunate, I wasn't a, particularly a bully by nature at all, although I did engage in it a couple of times. And I didn't get bullied that much because I got, people tried to bully me sometimes and you know, when you stand, when you make a stand, like there's this one kid who's standing in front of my locker, <coughs> trying to not let me get to my locker. He did it a couple days ago, <coughs> and like the third day he did it, I just, I went right up to him and just started choking the shit out of him up against the locker. He was smaller than me anyway, so. Um, and then a teacher came by, like, whoa, 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 what are you doing here? You know, and we didn't get in trouble though because it's the seventies, you know, or the eighties at that point, I guess. So the thing is, the I, I got to witness my own daughter get rather mercilessly bullied in middle school by mm -hmm. the girls in the private school. That was a very small school. There was a small class. It's like there was 25 people in our whole class or something like that. Um, I was happy that I was able to be there and provide a safe haven for her. But uh, my pleasure, mm -hmm. Winston's mom, you know. You've been nothing but fantastic from day one. I'm Generation X. So uh, I, I got I got the free wheeliness of the seventies. I got the anti-drug insanity of the 80s as well. I can't tell you how many fucking anti-drug assemblies I sat through. And my response to them was always the same. Ooh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> that sounds like magic. This is like a magic potion from Dungeons and Dragons. No, I, would, I didn't bully any girls at all. Uh, I was... Uh, well, one time, one I did. One I did one time. I remember it. I feel bad about it. Um, I don't know. Was it uh, freaking idiot face from Black Flag? Was that his name? He's like the equivalent of Jello Biafra, but he's not Jello Biafra. He's does a speaking circuit. Uh, Henry Rollins. Henry Rollins. Yeah, Henry Rollins is freaking horrible. Ugh. You've got to be an ENFP. I, I saw him speak when I was in college. He has a speaking engagement. He came and spoke. And at first, I was like, kind of like, yeah, I'm caught up in the energy he's bringing. And then I realized pretty quickly, oh my God, this kid's not saying a goddamn thing. I didn't even say for the whole time. Well, I mean, he's just, he's just such a douche. He really is the best way to get, um, I grew up that way too. That's interesting, Core. Don't put Core on timeout yet. I'm going to delete the message. But that's interesting. So Core here is referencing a person called Metaso. Wait, I said don't hide him yet. That was interesting. I got to tell you about Metasoap. Metasoap's, uh 
an old school um, conflict person who had a shit ton of conflict with me because I wouldn't allow her bullshit to pass, you know? Yes, I do. I will give you that. Sneak preview. Henry Rollins is not cool, not at all. Henry Rollins is an extremely dorky. I, I take Jello Biafra over Henry Rollins, and Jello Biafra is another ENFP. So it's not just the ENFP ishness. It's, it's, oh, oh no, Henry Rollins, you will not stand up there like you deserve to be talking, and I should be listening. You need to listen because you're not saying anything. You don't know how to say things, apparently. I mean, I'm, I remember how how it started. He told an anecdote about how he had uh, met somebody and they said um, they had tried to kill themselves and he rolled his eyes and he's like, yeah, we know about that. Listen to the Smiths, blah, blah, blah. And then they rolled their sleeve and they had a big ass scar from here to here. I said, ah, these are my people. Wait, wait, what? I guess he's trying to be edgy. And then, you know, he tried to have some sort of like positive message about how, you know, we got to stand together because the world's pushing us down kind of shit. He's like, wait, wait, what? Huh? Okay, Henry Rollins, you need to totally suck it. But you know, Jello Biafra is also <sighs> NFP. But his music's way better. His lyrics are way better. Um, and he doesn't have that awful smugness that Henry Rollins has. I don't mind if someone's going to be smug. Okay. But they need to have good reason to be smug. For that moron to stand up there and smugly patter away at us as though he's doing something other than spitting in the face of every intelligent person in the audience is uh, unacceptable. For me to be smug is totally acceptable in certain circumstances. If I'm right, if I'm making sense, if I'm saying something, if I'm doing purposeful work with my language, he's doing none of those things and yet carrying himself as though he is. Not acceptable. Who's that guy who makes people walk over coal? <laughs> That's Santa's new policy, I believe. If you're naughty. If you can walk over these hot coals, you can do anything. Why would that be the case? It would seem maybe you might claim if I could walk over these hot coals, I could walk across hot pavement in the summer. You might claim if I could walk across these hot coals, I can go to the beach without any flip-flops on. But why would you claim that if I can walk across these hot coals, I can do anything? Do you think what limits me in life is my fear of walking across hot coals? I mean, it's does anybody, I'm sure we all are feeling this as well, right? We all understand, oh my God, how appallingly stupid. Oprah did it. And I, I hope we're all recognizing at the same time, we're all saying simultaneously in unison, oh my God, how astonishingly stupid of her. Why? What's the purpose of walking across hot coals? What, what, what are you supposed to learn from that? If it's easy enough that Oprah can do it, 
it must not be a very meaningful thing to do. It's not like Oprah has some sort of special cold walking skills. I didn't know. Did you, because, I don't know. A shortcut to get in your in eye. <laughs> Sounds like a shortcut to get burned feet. Mm-hmm. How does that get you in your in eye? Ouch, 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 it's hot. How is that in eye? That's S I. Fasting, fasting and cold showers are also S I. Well, fasting is just a dumb NI thing. It's a, it's a dumb SI thing that NI people do. Okay, so Sean, what you're saying is when the environment compels you to make note of it, because it's so shocking physically, a change to your system, that that shocking physical stimulation causes you to retreat from your conscious senses into your intuition. So in other words, if I'm perfectly comfortable, then I'm going to feel a lot less intuition. I'm going to be a very sensory person. But if I'm actually compelled to pay attention to my senses, then I'll be more intuitive. How the fuck is that supposed to work? No, but Sean, listen. If I break my foot, I'm not more in my intuition. I'm less in it because, ow, my foot's hurting and I can't stop paying attention to it. That's one plus one equals two. Easy, squeezy, nobody should disagree with that. And I, is Sean O'Neill right? No, he's catastrophically wrong. No, I don't, Sean O'Neill. If, let's say, okay, Sean O'Neill, Mr. Ignore the Pain, let's say we cut off your right foot. Would that make you more intuitive? Because you couldn't ignore the fact that you were jumping around on a stump? No, Sean, that's not T.I., what I just said, what you're saying that pain makes you pay less attention to your senses and more to your intuition is batshit crazy. Or I guess more appropriately, bat guano stupid. Makes zero sense on any level. N, T, F, S, anything. <laughs> makes zero sense. <laughs> Yes, it is fair, Sean. It makes absolutely zero sense. <coughs> no, you said it puts you in your NI. But in fact, you're saying SI stimulus that compels you to pay attention by your SI to what's happening to your body makes you more NI. That's like saying um, when the sun goes down, that makes it more bright outside. No, you said it makes you more NI. Takes you out of your senses and puts you into your NI. That's what you said. I will read your exact words. Your senses retreat from your conscious, puts you in NI. That's what you said. But why would sensory, why would strong sensory experience that compels you to pay attention to it, such as a broken leg or being very cold or being very hot or something like that? Why would that make you pay less attention to the sensory data? That doesn't make any sense. It's like saying the deeper somebody stabs a knife into your leg, the less it hurts. It makes no sense. No, I don't think I did. You're you're putting words in my mouth, Sean. You said it puts you in your NI. You said strong SI data puts you in your NI. But that doesn't make any sense. That's like saying bright lights make you hear better. Or like saying that's that horrible taste makes me want to eat a bunch of it. It makes no fucking sense whether you own it or not. That's how you feel. 
Well, who the fuck cares how you feel? I mean, why would anybody care about that? Talk about something not worth caring about. We're talking about cognitive functions, Sean. We're not talking about what you want for your fucking birthday. We're talking about which explanation is correct. We're not talking about which flavor of ice cream you like better. So your feelings don't fucking matter, obviously. It's offensive that you think they do. If we were talking about which relationship partner you want or something like that, your feelings matter. If we're talking about whether or not something's kind or something, your feelings matter. If we're talking about what explanation is correct about cognitive functions, your feelings can suck my fucking dick. <coughs> is that a type of of me? A little bit. A little bit of But well deserved. Well deserved. Yes, yeah, I mean, is it also your feeling that despite the preferable explanation that the plate tectonics offers, you still prefer the expanding Earth hypothesis? Is that also your feeling? I mean, that's not how to think. And this is a thinking activity we're doing. When we, when we try to explain things, Sean, we have a responsibility to know what the fuck we're talking about. Because what happens, Sean, if somebody asks you questions and you carry on like you know what you're talking about, what's going to happen? You're going to spread disinformation or misinformation. I didn't change the wording, Sean. I read your words exactly. I, you keep saying that. I've already responded to that, and you keep ignoring what I'm saying. Sean, what you did say was it gets you in your N.I. and pulls you out of your senses. You said that. I didn't say you said it makes you more intuitive. No, I... Sean, I will read your words again. I mean, I don't need to win, but I need to make it very clear that this behavior results in an uncomfortable experience for Sean because he needs to experience the natural consequences of being stubbornly wrong. Sean, when you tell people things about cognitive functions, like you know what you're talking about, you're spreading misinformation because you don't know shit. You don't know your ass from your nose. You don't know anything at all about cognitive functions. Everything I've ever heard you say practically is completely wrong. So don't do it. And the fact that you feel like you're right is not a good enough reason to cloud people's minds with bullshit. Is Sean benefiting from me right now? Yeah, a lot. Most importantly, everybody else is benefiting from me lambasting Sean right now. Because he'll think twice about saying stupid ass shit to people who don't know any better. He say it to me, it doesn't matter. I know better, but a lot of people don't. I mean, you saw McKenzie come in and be like, um, I'm upset because he typed me as not TI and he didn't even let me talk at all. It's like, okay, well, he doesn't know what he's doing at all, obviously. I don't expect you to be part of the solution, John, but if you insist on continually being part of the problem, you will get the full and just natural consequences of that willful wrongness, which I already say, I will lambast you accordingly. I mean, that's just 
you know, it's just Lady Justice putting on her blindfold and saying, the fuck? Because that's how she talks. Because she's cool like that. Take an intermission. She's a schemer, I know that I wanna be a man You found a stone Stick around baby, I can't stand to be alone like Morris, he said, I'm human, need to be loved. That's why I got these pair of gloves. I'm gonna put them on top of my hands, and then that way they won't be cold when it's grand piano time. Grand piano time. Haka, kachika, kacha, cha, cha. I like your tunes. You get funky for me, Eric. Stars, you got a funky nose and a funky mouth. You even live in a funky house, and I won't have any of that, Strauss. So trust me, you better believe that I'm gonna stand up now and leave. If you want to sit here, that's fine, but don't expect anybody, don't expect anybody. Yeah, and the point is, I was not enjoying talking to you in the chat. Well, I don't want to talk to you, I want to home to mama. Mama got two words for the family affair. Don't think nobody takes you back to papa. Papa's always looking to show that he cares. Don't think no one ever gonna take you home to mama. Way too long, kid, for family up there. Ain't nobody gonna bring you home to papa. Ain't a man who likes to share. Out of rock, rock and run, playing around those heavy chords. Show me how to be so hard. Cut the line to play for Cadillac. You rock so hard, I don't know what I got. Listening to that deadly country shot. After all your dog and dog to the very back and then rock I roll Roll your pancakes on my junk or rock your uncle up too much wine and I'll rock those pancakes for your lunch and I'll roll up for the you and mine I'm a cow rock like a rock and black like a rock and black separate the Lord of Rock and I got no so you do do the rock I know that you do not rock to stop this pocket every day Okay, Sean, listen. Did that make it clear I don't want to talk to you? I don't want to talk to you. I'm going to give you some good news, though. You sure do remind me of an ENFJ I once knew named Nick, who was always thinking that as long as he, he, like, put out enough of an FE spread that he'd get a pass on when he was totally wrong. But that ain't never going to happen because I'm the benefactor. ENFJ is the beneficiary. I know from my own relationship with my dad, 
The benefactor always got to jump on you. Just how it is. Um. So I yeah I don't want to talk to you. I find it frustrating. You're not listening to me. Yeah. If I did say that you said more intuitive, I repeated multiple times thereafter that I was now referencing your exact words only, so you couldn't make that move anymore, and you just kept repeating yourself. It's very frustrating to me. After I addressed it. Multiple times. I don't care if you're trying to score a point. It doesn't matter what your motivations are in this instance. The point is, if you're spreading misinformation about cognitive functions, you're going to get corrected because I don't think that's a good thing to do. And I don't think the people who don't know anything about cognitive functions should go pontificating about them as though they do because that makes them part of the problem. I didn't put you into a framing error. I'm saying very clearly a non-framing argument. I'm saying you don't know shit about cognitive functions and almost everything you've ever said about it has been wrong. So you shouldn't be pontificating as though you do understand them. That's not a framing thing. That's me being very, very direct. What idea did you pitch? It's because one limited idea, and or some portion of it, seemed like maybe promising, is not a general a general affirmation of you as a typologist. Well, I, I mean, I encourage you to work on figure, you know understanding typology better, not on talking as though you already do. All right, I'm gonna try to bond over this stuff. This is gonna be very leafy, but I'll, I'm gonna try it and I'll pack one for you too, of course, Rachel. Okay. But uh, um, this is this homegrown stuff that went re veg, so it budded and then it went back to vegetative because of the light change. Um, but I decided before I forsook all the the buds to be double buds. So in other words, when it buds again, these parts that are already partially budded are going to double bud, so to speak. But um, I decided to see how it was, where it was. So let's test it out. Probably going to just taste like very grassy because it's very leafy. But Not bad. Not bad at all. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little uh, harsh on the throat. Not really on the lungs. Wow, that's in the, in the condition that it's in, or the state of development that it's in. It's a great sign, you know. It is a great sign. Check it, check it out, yo. Not bad at all. So let's see what's going on. Growing up, I wanted to be a pro soccer player, but I didn't have much opportunity to, so it never happened. Hmm. Well, I played soccer as a kid, but I was one of the worst team, worst worst players on the team. 
not one of the better ones. I just I didn't seem to quite get sports until maybe I was like eighteen or something. And then I realized, oh, you just gotta try hard. <laughs> I, I hate Conan O'Brien. I think he's not funny at all. Incorrigible kitten. What makes you so incorrigible? And uh, I'm glad you brought up that word because rather like being overwhelmed or underwhelmed, I'm curious if you can be corrigible. Does that mean you're able to be fixed? Eric, at least acknowledge you misconstrued my message where I was just showcasing that I correctly remember how you identified with when I talked to you probably with that broke me. I remember something about a talk to you, but I don't remember me responding that way. I might have, but I'm sorry, I don't remember. Was it last live stream or something? If I did say that and I was wrong, well, I mean, Lee Trimmer. <coughs> okay, yeah, two streams back. Okay. You're you're letting these exchanges occupy too much of your headspace. And I this is actually serious advice. Uh, because it happens to me sometimes too. Um, when someone will get in my head a little bit and I'll be driving around and I'll be thinking about how annoyed I am at Mia for whatever. Uh, it's important to remember that you decide to whom and what you lease your headspace to a certain extent. Uh, obviously, when something traumatizes you in some way, which is to say, you, know, you can be emotionally traumatized, walk away from here feeling mad or uh, being feeling as though you were treated unfairly or something, and it can bug you. You know, I didn't re them on purpose. They're outdoor. They're outdoor, 69. So, uh, just they just re on their own. Okay, well, I'm sorry that that happened, Leaf Trimmer. But, you know, you are a chronic uh, incident report writer. So, I've worked in various places and sometimes you get that person who complains about everything writes up a little <laughs> incident report about everything you know really kind of is a stickler for following the protocols that everybody knows are CYA things cover your ass things you know and it's just causing like okay now I'm having to be super careful all the time about everything because every time I say anything that might be construed as as unfair to you or uh, not response to what you actually said or conflating something you said or intuiting something from what you said is probably even true, even though you didn't actually say that directly. It's like, Jesus Christ, could you make yourself more of a pain in the ass? Could you make yourself more of a difficult person to engage with? So... You know, yes, there will be instances when you can justly complain about your treatment. But if you jump on every possible instance that you can justly complain about your treatment, then you're paying way too much attention to how you're being treated unfairly. You're looking too hard for examples of that because you're not being treated unfairly by and large. Most people are nicer and more pleasant and would like to engage pleasantly. And generally, when an engagement between you and somebody else doesn't go well, is probably because you pushed it that direction. The other night, I don't remember which night it was, I remember you were in a particularly foul mood and you were incredibly pissy about everything. If it was from that stream, then I definitely don't have anything to apologize for. I mean... <laughs> From where did you draw that conclusion, Leaf Tremor? When you say, Eric named his stream cognitive functions are astrology all because of one comment Richard made. I mean, would you like to actually hear the etymology of it? So, certainly Richard's question prompted the title 
but the actual work there was specifically about trying to explain to the ESFP I had battled with for a long time in ways that I thought maybe ESPs could understand what it meant to be TI, what it meant to be, you know, action deliberation type versus et cetera. So that, that's what actually motivated the video. If you watch the whole thing, you'll note that it spent zero time talking about the question of astrology. Sorry. The bar says that he didn't desire to be famous in itself, but I always wanted to be great at something. I guess I would say I started off wanting to be famous, or at least wanting to be the center of attention. I always would fantasize as a kid about giving talks to groups of people. <laughs> and I'm living the dream right now. It's unbelievably satisfying. <sighs> okay, Lee Trimmer. So this is the shit I'm talking about. Fuck off. He's just being a dick, you know, find something to be pissy about. Just being unpleasant. Maybe not even a dick. Just being a whiny little bitch, as usual. Please turn her. It's like, you know, you really should take, make it every man in the world, I don't care what your sexuality is or anything like that, but every man in the world should say to themselves at some point during their life, you know what, self? Don't be a whiny little bitch. You just gotta kind of man up. I'm not gonna complain about everything. I'm not gonna start shit about everything. I'm gonna try to actually be a somebody who doesn't have ginormous fucking chips on each shoulder. I'm gonna try to behave in a way that's more agreeable or at least less disagreeable. That's what you need to decide to do because, you know, my tolerance level for this shit is not particularly high. But you do it too, Eric. Fuck off. If, if, I didn't, if I wasn't clear about that the first time. I'm not in a pissy mood right now. I seem like I was in a pissy mood. What's the title of this? It's about how current financial texts are unfair. My whole point was it is unfair because the world, certain contexts in the world reward certain things. People get their ontologies defined so much in childhood and also their like career identities and stuff defined in childhood. And yet they have no autonomy in childhood. They can't actually like develop their stack. Can you imagine an RPG in which there are wizards and clerics and fighters and archers and uh, thieves. And, but the school teaches only the cleric curriculum to everybody. So that all the players in the game have to learn all the cleric curriculum and don't get to learn their own curriculum. That's what the world is for children. Children have no authority or autonomy over their own learning. And they're never... They're never taught initially to the proper framing, which is you are the author of your own education. You need to find something purposeful to do that's, that's worth doing. In addition to, uh, I agree, horse bumbler can be unnecessarily dickish sometimes. Uh, we all can. I, it's not the end of the world somebody is, right? You're not going to hear me condemning somebody because a stream or two ago they were being a dick. What you will hear me eventually start to condemn is a repeated pattern of consistently being whiny about shit. Whining about this little little perceived slight, that little perceived slight. It's like, uh-uh, I don't have time for that shit. I should do a gaming stream. I've done gaming streams before. I don't really like gaming that much. 
Uh, I kind of want to play an RPG game like um, Final Fantasy or something. Uh, in fact, I, I think it was Final Fantasy that I tried to purchase, but I purchased the wrong one. I purchased the expansion pack, but I didn't have the original one, mm-hmm. so I had to get a refund. I was planning on buying it again, but then I decided, nah, eh, it's not. It's so much that you have to get both the thing and the expansion pack. I didn't watch it. Uh, what was it about, Chris Jeffin? I don't remember. Getting, I think I remember getting an email or something from you. It was about uh, Queen's Gambit. Oh, I did. I do remember getting. Are you the one who sent me the picture? No, that was all over the line hand. That was all over the line hand. Who sent me the, the screenshot? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember thinking that I'm not interested in that because um, I'm not, I have not very good music theory, for one thing. Like, I basically don't, I never use music theory. I have some I can access abstractly if I if I had a circumstance in which I want to or need to, but it never arises, so I never use any music theory for anything. Um, I don't really read music at all, although I can very slowly read music, like okay, F A C E, <laughs> like that kind of shit, you know. Um, so, uh, I right, let's talk about old jazz players. Not any theory. Okay, cool. Because I was thinking I it would probably be stuff I wouldn't understand and would have to think too hard about as to why it would be the case that notation wasn't covering. It's like, it's as soon as he mentioned a circle of fifths, I'm just like, I'm out. <laughs> I am out. I don't, I don't want to learn about this shit. The only thing I remember about the circle of fifths from, from my music theory class in college is that it means you're not allowed to play bar chords or something. <laughs> that, that's what I remember about the circle of fifths. <laughs> the teacher says, so what this means is really technically you're not supposed to play bar chords. I believe they talk like ENTPs. The thing is, I, I'm an ENTP. So like those two ENTPs, I want to be the one talking. I don't really want to be the one listening to other ENTPs talk. If I want to listen to other people talk, I, it's more like I want to listen to INFJs or I want to listen to uh, even maybe FI people, but because they're not they're not stepping on my niche toes, you know. How do you make music and can't read the notes? Well, I mean, I can I can read comping, so it's like if it just says a letter of the chord, like A minor, C, D, D minor, whatever, I can play all those chords. But if it has them written on sheet music notes, like this is a D minor chord, it would take me forever to play one song. I'm very policey with any. Out of time also sounds jarring to the human ear. What's out of time mean? I don't know what that means. Lulu's doing well. Lulu seems to have adjusted to some of the changes. I made him a really good bridge with a little thing up to the thing. He didn't ever climb up there, so I think he he didn't really want to climb out. He just was he just gets confused sometimes when he gets like stuck in a corner or He's something. Got feelers. Well, I I mentioned this morning. I didn't think maybe he was the the smartest crayfish in the world. But Rachel pointed out he's blind, basically totally blind. So. Yeah. So what sounds, what 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 are you talking about keeping up with the beat or not keeping up with the beat or whatever? He was talking about just before. Are you whining again, Lee I can't tell. Oh, he's hanging in his shell. Cool.
So, you know, it's like I learned to play the guitar basically by learning to play covers that would just say like A, D, A, D, E or whatever and then have the lyrics on it. Um, so, uh, I do know how to play a lot of different chords. I can play basically most chords that you're going to see in most songs. You know, sometimes it'll be like C6 suspended fourth or something I'm like that. What the fuck is that? You know? But yeah, I look at the picture and I can see the fretboard and it'll show me what it looked like where you put your fingers, you know? Well, thanks, Boba Fett. If I learned how to spell PP, yeah, it is. It is. It is PP spelled like Pippi Longstocking. Yeah. I mean, do I time you out all the time? And chords will get in. If you get timed out here a lot, you almost certainly get banned every place else in very short order because I'm quite tolerant. Yes, you are. Really? Now, you guys, your kind words make me want to play the guitar. What is it, I wonder? Oh, it's in a car. Oh. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to walk all the way up to the car. I'm going to pull in the driveway while I'm out there. And the rain is all right. All right.
Well, I found my guitar. It was exactly where I expected it to be. Please play agency. Okay, I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to play that just as soon as I play this song about my hopes and dreams. I want to write a song good enough for Hollywood to put inside a movie. And people sing along and think that it's really groovy. I'd like to write a song like that. But it's not easy being brilliant. Brilliant people get ahead. I'm still sitting here being silly and making up things off the top of my head. song that's good enough for Hollywood to put inside a movie that would be fine. Those are my hopes and dreams. Someday I hope to win an Oscar for best song in a movie that nobody made. It's called the Grammy. I'm going to hear the request and play that song because thank you for requesting something. <clears throat> I mean, that's if there's anything that truly makes me emotional consistently is the thought that one way or another, there are some people in the world who actually like what I'm doing musically enough to request one of my songs because they know it and like it It is an amazing thing for me. It's like, music's always been a struggle. It's the least well understood of all media. Sammy has a story that need be told. This is a song for an open road. Such a thing must always do its job. Married up Jeb and turned 19. Four years in, three kids, we weary now, question. Agency, I place his discretion, locking in our courses, way too young. The urgency comfort is really just a pressure, making sure those underneath them all way. So forth well up into middle age. What once had seemed to set him free became his whole identity. Now Doug's about another drunken reach. Agency, I face his discretion, locking in our courses. Way too young. The urgency conferred is really just a pressure. Offer you incentives, but they haven't got a thing that's fun. Everybody's panicked about the kid 
it. Like a marble extra deficit. Mathematics to produce success. Or impose more on just the rest. Agencies outpace discretion. Locking in our courses. Way too young. The emergency convert is really just oppression. Making sure those underneath them always run. Without consent, it's really just oppression. By parasites surviving on their wages earned by lying. While they feed their fear of dying. Yeah, they feed upon the futures of the Young <laughs> Thanks, darling. I kind of fucked up the very ending, but that's okay. That was, that was, that was good. <laughs> Much noise in the data stream. Loud enough to disrupt everybody's dreams. Too much noise in the data stream. Loud enough. Disrupt everybody's dreams. When frustrations mean mistakes are made. Until it seems everybody's just throwing shit. I won't be just another casualty of other people's well. For yesterday, it's not the sort of thing that one can borrow. No one will he still to lend a day. Your uncertainty's implicit, just like an unexpected visit from a bunch of men all dressed in blue suits. Well, it's, not, it's getting better. It's getting there. Need some practice. Need more practice. You know, not the easiest song in the world for me. I haven't really found how exactly I want to play it. You know. What's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he rather like Dan, who's a terrible man? Is he sort of like Jill, who can't pay her bill? Or rather like Jack, too stuck on the facts? What's the matter with Sue? Will she know what to do if they bring it to? Will she show ingenuity? She talks about you. Whenever we go walking, what's the matter with Brynn? Is she living in sin? Is she hanging with Jen? He's looking terribly thin. What's the deal with Frank? Dealing fish from my tank. He's colluding with you, and they're talking to Lou. What's wrong with the ladies? What's the matter with men? From the feeling of baby to the coldness of Sven. Talk about you whenever we go walking. 
Pies that lead to lesser days. Pies that lead to lesser days. Spill till I be over. Spill till from the over water past. Whoever's left that's still okay. Just as I say goes to the mask. Are you angry at Ken or at Neville again? Bother with Kev, he's practically dead. Focus on Bert, he's medium hurt. What's the quantity for Liz? Did she fail a quiz? What's the deal with Drew? Will she know what to do if they bring her attitude? Is she showing genuity? She talks about you whenever we go walking. Pies that lead to lesser days. Pies that lead to lesser days. Spins till I feed over water past. And whoever is left that's still okay. Just tie the sails to the mast. Cause each of us is much and gravely sent. Throw up the hands. Stiffen the chin. Catastrophe looms heavy overhead again. Time's gone, will never be again. Thank you. Not too bad. beginning part messed up and I remembered how to play it more by the second part of it. Oh, he came here with her and what's the big problem that you can't enter? You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott despite getting caught. He's got you reframing Straining for him, going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. Yeah, you guys both have lots invested. 
That's not a reason to stay around Through the years you both been tested Time to move up Find higher ground Oh, he came here with her And was the okay problem can't enter. You seem so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Despite getting caught, he's got you reframing for him, straining for him, going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. Be done with him. Thank you, darling. Thank you, my beloved angel. Beloved angel of wonderment. You're living on a time frame I will never know. Alienation and humanity's soul. Imagine you a future after the collapse. Returning to the urgency of isolated past. Picturing community free of metaphysics. Haunting buffalo while you're picking red delicious. Knowledge of the seasons. Wisdoms of old, fires blazing in the night to keep away the cold. Hostility is kept at bay by what you think is in the way of life as children of the land with an agave weatherman. You're imagining a history that never could have been. You lecture at the college, advancement is a sin. Lamenting disconnection and every corporate act. Asserting all your feelings and ignoring all the facts. Hostility is kept to bay. But what you think is in the way. Of life as children of the land. With an agave brother man. Savages and beautiful comport, but few of history's people ever thusly did comfort. Life was solitary, nasty, brutish, poor, and short. Hostility is kept to bay, but what you think is in the way of life as children. Maybe one more song, we still. I'm not quite done. I, I think I want to play uh, this one. I like this song. Just brooding here won't do any good, but brooding's more and more my style. I seek the cheer ways of standing where we stood, cause I've been stuck here a while. That's despite a natural selfishness That makes it easy to have fun But flutters in the gut Become a fist As all my visions go undone I try to stream, distract and dream in the afternoon away But heavy new realities are breaking every day I grow up it, I am out of it Seems 
like everybody's so sensitive, so ready to just get mad. I see the simple ways of living like a kid, cause who wants to be the dad? Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Our capacity to laugh? The sense to know when not to wail. I try to stream this track and dream the afternoon away, but having no realities bear down on every day, and for a bit I am out of it, for reasons still unsaid. So sad for me, so sad for her unhappily. And what you call sorrow, I call home. Blues that sink clear down to the bone. Yeah, still I'm sad, so sad for me, so sad for her unhappily. And what you call sorrow, I call home. Blues that sing clear down to the bone And so I'm sad, till I'm sad So sad for me, sad for her Happily, and what you call sorrow I call blues that sing clear down To the bone And of course, I'm going to play my favorite cover before I go. So far, call me a rambling man, because I do a lot of thumbing and a kicking can. I won't do an hands good to call me names. My daddy was a Willie Woodrow. I was born and raised in Oakland, so I was born in a place to do my thing. No, I don't want no handout living. Want any part of anything they care. Proud and white, I got a song to sing. I said a few things in Dolly, admitted if you want to get a hit, you got a home and get it. Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. I'm gonna find me a wealthy woman in a line of books that don't take no plumber because I ain't got much to lose but lots to gain. I was born. God damn it. Well, I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get ahead, you got a home and get it. Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. Long time boy been around a little and I like to talk around like a bit. I can kind of soak the fan my thing. Blue white Billy beard and really, I got to work just to be somebody. Just a white boy looking for a place to do my thing. I don't want no hand out living, don't want any part of anything they give and I'm proud and white and I call the sound to sing. I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get ahead, you got a home and get it. It's my boy, you a place to do my thing. I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get ahead, you got a home and get it. It's my boy, looking for a place to do my thing. Yeah, I said a few things and I'll admit it. If you want to get ahead, you got a hump and get it. It's a wild boy looking for a place to do my thing. That's a fun song. Yeah, it's a fun song. <sighs> I feel 
So how do I feel like I I play things a little bit? I get so sad when I uh, it's way too hot. Freaking cat damn it. Way too hot. And they all fucking clipped out the whole way. God damn it. That's some frustrating frustration. But whatever. Who cares? If it's not all time, it doesn't really matter. Um, I tell you what does matter. This noisy ass noise over here. Whatever. The uh, filter? Yeah. Okay, let's call it a night. Oh, boy, I tell you. These days, these people with their things and their stuff, it's oy vey, what can I do about it? Yeah. Uh, it's warm in here. The uh, doors aren't open. It was warm earlier. It never got... <laughs> Megan Labota's other eyebrow is pregnant? Wow. Mm -hmm. I am shocked that I was able to do that. Me too. That ever even mean the woman? I was somehow able to impregnate her. Yeah. So you're like I, you Joseph? I mean, I'm guessing it was a long distance shot. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah. And one little blob just shot like a thousand miles or wherever far away she lives. Like right onto her eyebrow? No, right into her cooch. She was. She happened at that moment to be. Spreading out on the bed like this, uh, scratching her butt cheek, <laughs> and it went pew. Wow, and so she got pregnant. Congratulations! <laughs> Hobla Bert says, I'm going out to out local attractions to support local businesses, but all require hats and comfortable shoes. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, we don't thicken our sauces here. Okay. Don't be thickening my sauce. <laughs> that thickens my sauce is a good expression, I think. I did an online meeting, like an all free like tarot thing. And I asked about the future of our relationship and the future outcome was the hangman. What the heck does that mean? Hang in there? No, what do you think it means? Nothing? Correct. <laughs> it means absolutely nothing. Because after all, Rachel, um, to the extent that anybody would be able to predict the future of our relationship, it would be us because we're the ones with the experience of the relationship. It doesn't matter what the tarot says because, I mean, it's like, you see, the problem here, Rachel, is either for us to split up, either I have to leave you or you have to leave me, right? It doesn't just happen that all of a sudden the stars come down and spread us apart from each other. So we can know that neither of us is going to do that. Or at least I feel very confident you're not going to leave me. I know I'm not going to leave you. This is perfectly happy, healthy relationship. I think that what you're experiencing at the moment is a little something called mm. gackiness. You're gacky right now. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you go take a bath? I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to come and take a bath after that. I think you need a little bit of the D. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels so like. Hey, Key, why don't you go take a bath? You need to take a bath. It's good for your SI. I'll come in and keep you company in a second, okay? I'll just wrap this shit up in here. And, yeah. It's not meant to be read as a bad sign. Remember, the moon is in Scorpio. So what does that mean, if the moon's in Scorpio? Yeah. 
Does it mean that um, everybody was kung fu fighting? Fist flying as fast as lightning? Is it a fighty time? Is Moon and Scorpio a time of much battles? Or is Moon and Scorpio a time of mystery? So, like, the, the summary that I have for it is, like, not bad. It's just, like, being man says to stick with the mundane for a while until you learn to appreciate things in life everyone takes for granted. Educate yourself and become an interesting person inside That's it out. such a bullshit. That's such complete bullshit, Rachel. What, what I'm trying to get you to do over time, and I thought we're on the same page, I think we are on the same page, yeah. is, is to get you to start taking things for granted. Right? It's telling you, you take too much for granted and aren't appreciating your life enough and um, just hang in there and the, the good parts of your life will start to reveal themselves. What could be, could, could you imagine anything being further from the truth? It seems like every day you verbally, vocally, and behaviorally express the exact opposite. That not that you're taking things for granted, but that you know you're finally relaxing and yeah. hopefully you know starting to take some some basic things you should take for granted. For granted, like we should all take for granted the fact that we can walk down the street without getting hit in the face by a cannonball. If you say, I can't believe you took that for granted, they wouldn't be shooting cannons down the sidewalk. Well, yeah, I took that for granted. I mean, I don't expect cannonballs to be shot at me while I'm walking on the sidewalk. So the thing is, Rachel's had a lot of cannonballs shot at her as she's walking on the sidewalks. So she's a little bit more on the lookout for possible enemy fire or something. But she doesn't need to worry about it at all because not only is that not going to happen, but even if she were to fret a shit ton about it, it still wouldn't cause it to happen. She Not only is it not going to happen naturally, she can't even make it happen. Like, I just like, I felt more FI today than like I thought I would. I wasn't thinking any FI. Somebody's not handling that roll very well. <laughs> That's just a fear. Okay. Well, will you listen to my prescription for your ailments? Yes. Why don't you go take a bath? We'll feel good. I'll be in there in a little bit. I'll be in there in within 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Try Q pie. Oh, I should probably take some Yeah. It's rich and tastes more eggy. I love things that taste very eggy. Every time I get a large Coke at Jack in the Box, I tell them, can you drop a raw egg in there for me, please? I'm training to be a boxer. All you have to do to turn any training into boxing training is drink a raw egg at some point during the training session. <laughs> and then yeah, you're training to be a boxer. Really yeah. yeah, then you're training for boxing or MMA. But those are the only people who need to eat their eggs raw because they're so tough that their, their digestive systems just laugh at cooked food. Um, okay, so I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up, but I just feel sad that I didn't get a good recording at the end of the song because I've tried to, I almost never, I almost never record separately, right? You know, like I was doing right there, which is, uh, because if I just get the live stream audio, it's just pure crap. So sometimes all, Oh, as they say, meow the meow. And when and then I go to the trouble of meowing the meow and I still get a shitty thing, then that sucks ass. It makes me feel sad like sorrow. Sorrowful and sad and sorrowful, sad indeed. So I have to try to get one more. One more. Yeah, 
song so I can get a good recording. But I also want this thing to be quiet. I'm just going to unplug it for a second. So loud. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Then we'll feel a favor. The game rhyme. Here we go. <laughs> Just check the levels first. It's funny how they, the both the songs I have to get, I had to learn to do, to sing it the right way for that uh, white band song. But this starts in a different. It's like a key thing. So this is a song for an open road and such a thing. Here we go. Sammy has a story that need be told, and this is a song for an open road, and such a thing must always do its job. She married up Jeff, turned 19, four years in, and three kids wound, weary now, and questioning the past. Agency out, face discretion, locking in our courses, way too young. The urgency conferred is really just depression, making sure those underneath them always run. Doug get 20 flat bourbon fun, likewise Doug at 21, and so forth well up into middle age. What once had seemed to set him free became his whole identity, now Doug about another drunken breed. Agency out, face discretion, like it in our courses, way too young. The urgency conferred is really just depression. Offer you incentives, they haven't got a thing that's fun. Everybody's bandit crap with the kids. Lock them up with extra toxidrin. Or impose more unjust duress. Agency outpaces discretion. Locking in our courses. Way too young. The urgency conferred is really just oppression. Making sure those underneath them always. Without consent, it's really just oppression. By parasites surviving on their wages earned by lying. Well, they feed their fear of dying. Yeah, they feed upon the futures of the young. Well, I didn't exactly nail it, but it wasn't terrible, I guess. <laughs> Two 
20,000 days. Is that the right number? 30,000 days. Too many expectations. Not even worth a damn. Intoxication, otherwise, you won't escape the plan. I wasted half my days trying on others' ways, looking down with my priorities. Is there anybody who knows the key? Cause I'm tired of doing it wrong. One direction. And have all along Wait until I know Or is that just hesitation Clarity's no good Once your chance is gone What I need to know Is it so below my station I'm tired of doing it wrong I wasted half my days trying on others' ways, hooking down with my priorities. Is there anybody who knows the key? Cause I think I'm doing this wrong. Yeah, I think I'm doing this wrong. I think I'm doing this wrong. Pretty good. When I was younger, it seemed that everything gleamed. I don't know what happened to me, but I've lost that sense. Emergency, and I don't think that I'll ever see it again. If you follow my lead, you'll discover I'm lost in you, and you'll want to know the way to get back out to wherever it was you thought you knew. Just like today, I'll be lost in two. It's a matter of need, as much as a matter of will. And the things I do, in the direction I point to, still seem part of me. Reportedly. And I wonder if I'll ever see them again. Bum ba di da ba di da di do ba di da ba di do. Bum ba di da ba di da di da ba di da ba di do. That's a nice song. Makes me feel pleased like pleasure and happy like goodness and thinking all kinds of fun stuff. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a thought. Okay. Didn't you see the red flashing light that said recording in progress, live television? This cat has no respect. I get no, re no, no regard, I tell you. I get no respect. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a lot. Gerald has a plot to get the margarines, tater tots. He's got a good idea for a name changing business. Thinking now about what you call Christmas. When they hire his firm to change that name. Gerald 
Don't stop to be chance enough to return to the work of that rough. He came back to it eventually. But his vision piled up and his plan to interrupt. All the work that started off so hopefully. But now his mind is back on his business, thinking of changing factless to listless. So how all the people will shout his name. Gerald knows he understands ever more clearly now. He won't provide explanation regarding the why and how. He'll see you and know you from inside your heart. Exciting, delighting, Gerald plays his part. But Gerald still needs too much to do. And he drops time in the underview. Much to be but so where now and what? Too much time spent picking the skill with you. Joe has a thought. Joe has a lot. Joe has a plot to get the margarine's tasty spots. He's got a good idea for an angel to business. Thinking now about what he'll call Christmas. They hire his firm to change that name. Gerald has a thought. Gerald does have a thought. That's what the song claims, and I stand by the claim. I own what I said. This song's too hard to sing. Fuck it. Too hard to sing. This one, a lot of you are sing. Every life lived reaches a time when the road splits in two. There are times, hard times, times of despair. Times when it's hard to feel good That's when I look for my sack full of solvency And my satchel of helpful goods Satchel of helpful goods Satchel of helpful goods Satchel of help Every life lived reaches an end When the road disappears When I'm there, will there be anybody else around? Will I travel all alone? That's when I'll look for my sack for solvency and a satchel filled up with bones and a satchel with nothing but home. Satchel of helpful goods, 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 satchel of helpful goods. Don't you hitting those high notes, I tell you. It's like somebody put them up too high. That's the problem. Can't reach up that high with my voices. Amelia, 
familia Go from the place They come to you The details of your case Familia when you rise up above Fuck it, Eric Amelia, go from the place they come to you. The details of your case. Amelia, when you rise above, floating ahead and sewing like a dove, what will they say when they look at you? They look in sideways in the space to your head. Silent with that first day. Amelia, I fucking I can never remember how to fucking play this song. Yeah, see. spirit of energy inside of my heart. Goodbye, my beloved friends. Let my loving vibes spew all over you all night long.